the programme. Now, in the past week, uh, three cyclists have been killed in the space of four days on London's roads. This morning, campaigners are gathering to demand ministers make cycling safer. But figures nationally show that could already be the case with the number of cycling deaths going down over the past decade. Our reporter Holly Hamilton is in Trafalgar Square for us this morning. Good morning to you, Holly. Good morning, Charlie. Yes, that's right. It does seem that more of us than ever are taking to the roads on two wheels, whether it's for fitness or fun or commuting. The number of cyclists in the UK has gone up in the past two decades by more than a quarter. So that has meant, obviously, that there have been more road safety initiatives put in place to try to keep us safe. And as you've mentioned, it does seem to be working. Compared to 10 years ago, the number of road deaths has gone down. But sadly, those three deaths on the roads in London in the space of just just one week this week has really hit home with people and that's renewed calls for further investment in infrastructure and investment in our roads and there will be this protest taking place this afternoon with people asking why can't there be more cycle paths more done to try to protect people and now we're going to speak now to some of the people who will be taking part in that protest Andrew I'll speak to you first Andrew you are a very an experienced cyclist tell me what it's like cycling on the roads in London day to day well, good morning. I've been cycling to work for 15 years now from Surrey, there and back. And in many ways, cycling is a joy because you're your own boss. You can go where you want, when you want. You're not stuck in congestion. You come to earth, you come to work, you're full of energy and it feels really good. And you're going past cars that are going nowhere, filling the air with rubbish. And that's what we need to change. But do you feel safe when you're cycling? So I've been cycling for a long time. I've had some near misses. I've had a minor collision. We need to recognise that the main hazard caused by the motor vehicles is the 25 people a day dying from pollution. And compared to that, the collision risk is small. It's tragic that we've had three deaths this week, but that is an unusual week. And for me, you can look at me, you can see I need the exercise and the health benefits of the exercise far outweigh the risk of collision. The problem with collisions is it's tragic for the people involved and it scares people off the roads, keeps them in their vehicles thereby increasing the risk you're trying to prevent. And I think, Andrew, that is important to mention that we do want to say that, tra that it is safe to cycle. We don't want to scaremonger or put people off. But tragically, those deaths has highlighted a, a really serious issue on our roads. Let's speak now to Ruth Ann and Baby Owen, who's joined us here this morning. Ruth Ann, I mean, the number of deaths has gone down, but what more needs to be done? Well, good morning. Um, so I cycle every day with my children. Um, we don't have a car and um, the cargo bike here is our way of getting around. Um, Owen's the, the third of three. Um, and I find, it the, I find it quick and convenient and easy and we sold our car because we didn't, we didn't need it. But most parents, that, <coughs> excuse me, most parents that I speak to do say that they just don't feel safe to cycle with their children in London. And um, I can't say I blame them. You just need one, one aggressive driver, one close pass, one um, driver tailgating you, honking, scaring your children, and it's going to put you off. Um, and that's just the opposite of what we need. So although it's brilliant that the deaths are going down, um, we need people to feel safe as well. And, and the good quality um, protected infrastructure of cycle paths away from motor vehicles is what makes people feel safe. And that's what's going to get families on two wheels, which is what we need. Thank you, Ruth Ann, and thank you, Baby Owen, for coming out this morning. Finally, Donica McCarthy, you're from the campaign group Stop Killing Cyclists. What are you hoping to achieve from this protest this afternoon? Yeah, we're bringing the protest to the door of the Treasury because we believe the Chancellor is the person responsible for the carnage on our roads. We've heard that there's 40,000 people a year dying from traffic pollution. There's another 11,000 people dying in Britain because they're afraid to cycle. So we must make the roads safe. So we need three billion a year invested in national cycling infrastructure. And the Chancellor is investing nothing in this national infrastructure at the moment. So we want to bring the responsibility to his door and demand you must invest in infrastructure that will save Britain's lives. Do some cyclists need to take some responsibility as well though? I mean, we have so many people who have told us about irresponsible cyclists too. Yeah, the, 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 over the last four years, one person has been killed by a cyclist on a footpath, yet something like 50,000 are being killed because of the traffic system. So the, 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 the level of, of damage being caused by cyclists is tiny compared to traffic. Yes, we're, we need to change, train kids in schools to be safe, but we need the infrastructure to make the, the, enable their parents to feel safe for the kids to cycle to school. It's really urgent.
Danica, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Now, the Department of Transport has said that they are doing everything they can to try to invest in cycling. It has, in fact, tripled spending in the past five years alone. And I must add that this protest that's taking place this afternoon, it's also a vigil to, to pay homage to those who have died on the roads this week and previously. As both sides here have said, it really is a case of one death is just too many.